Boruto is good, actually. Boruto Naruto The Next Generations is a contentious anime series that's gotten a lot of hate over the years. And while I can see people's disappointment, I think more times than not it manages to be what it needs to be rather than what many people wanted it to be. Good is generally a subjective term, but for me it's a matter of functionality. There's three things Boruto needs to be in order to get a passing grade from me. The first is a continuation of Naruto Shippuden answering questions that were left lingering, fleshing out any post-war character dynamics, and continuing the ever-present themes of cyclical pain and the power of empathy. The second is a love letter to early Naruto where the ratio of ninja hijinks to giant kaiju fights leaned heavily towards the former rather than the latter. And the third is a distinct and purposeful twist on the Naruto formula that allows it to become its own thing without taking a massive piss on everything Naruto himself struggled to accomplish. While the verdict is still out on that third point, things are looking good. <laughs> Uh, as an aside, as some of you may already know, I actually recorded this video back in like December of 2020 and things were looking good. Since then, things have looked even better. Kishimoto took over the series, and while I haven't read the manga or caught up with the anime, I did see a few spoilers that make me very excited. Basically, Kishimoto found a really cool way to give Naruto and Sasuke a last hurrah without shitting on them which in turn gives Boruto and Kawaki an opportunity to step higher into the spotlight without undoing any of the things Naruto accomplished. Like, could you imagine if they just brought back a fan favorite villain like Madara and then killed off Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura only to have Boruto kill them but for real this time? That'd be crazy! <laughs> Big world ending threats only exist for Naruto and Sasuke to show off since they're exponentially stronger than every other character combined. But those threats are few and far between, and most of the time it's just Boruto getting into ninja hijinks with his friends. And while Boruto can be borderline obnoxious as a lead, I think he'd be a great supporting character. He has the same superpowered empathy as his father, but had a different upbringing that led him to use that power differently, which is reflected in his dream or lack thereof. In that regard, Boruto is already a better sequel series than Star Wars. Rey gets railroaded into a lot of the same plot beats as Luke. But she's a different type of character from Luke, and those plotlines aren't built for her kind of character. And the ultimate result is that it shits on everything that came before and makes the entire character arc and sacrifice of Anakin Skywalker, and by extension the original trilogy, kinda pointless. That's why my favorite arc in Boruto so far is the Mitsuki arc. In this arc, Orochimaru's test tube baby has an existential crisis ripped straight from the original FMA. He goes to the stone village, we see the difference in culture, some cool action and character development, but the best part is that this plot could not exist without everything that happened in Shippuden. Onoki was more than willing to throw away lives across all the shinobi wars and was always more than willing to bolster his ranks by employing people like the Akatsuki. But then peace times came. The world changed. He changed. And without constant wars, children got weaker. Boruto's generation didn't need to be as strong to survive, and Anoki wanted to preserve that. Rather than criticizing the youth, he tries forming an army of artificial humans to preserve the peace and protect the youth of his village. And throughout that arc, Boruto convinces him to put more faith in the next generation because as things happen, people will become as strong as they need to be. Plus, the artificial humans have wills of their own, so throwing their lives away is no more ethical than continuing to use Shinobi. This is a plot and character arc that builds on pre-established events, current character arcs, and themes that stand on their own as good. It does a good job of addressing the natural quandary surrounding Naruto after the Fourth Great Ninja War. What does peacetime look like for a world that was built on centuries of bloodshed and an economy that required child soldiers to murder each other on missions? Is there any point to being a shinobi anymore? That's the point of Boruto's movie, which was then adapted into the anime. Sasuke ends up hitting the nail on the head. A shinobi is one who endures. There's always going to be bad apples and alien demigods. Whether conflict exists between different clans, different villages, or different worlds, there will always be a need to protect the next generation until they are ready to carry the torch. This strength and theme is also a weakness early on. Technically, Boruto is mostly filler, if by filler you mean anything not in the manga. Boruto's manga is monthly, so Studio Period dragged its feet when it came to Boruto's development. 
He's defined primarily by daddy issues, and that's something that isn't, or more accurately, couldn't be resolved until Momoshiki showed up. And that's the big elephant in the room. There's no adequate explanation for Naruto and Boruto's relationship. There's never an explanation for why they can't have Shadow Clones do some of the work so he can spend some time with his family. If this was any other Hokage, I could understand, but Naruto is able to effortlessly create thousands of clones, and has been able to since episode 1. I like the idea that even before he was Hokage, he didn't get much chance to be a father because of missions, and so he just completely fails at relating to his kids. Other than that, Naruto is believably the same character. It's not like after saving the world through empathy powers and influencing face turns in Nagato, Obito, and Sasuke, he tried killing one of his students just for going a little emo. <laughs> uh, that would be ridiculous. It tracks because the first few times we do see them spending time together, Naruto fumbles his way through the interaction and ends up annoying Boruto. But that doesn't really excuse the lack of oversight and it does sting seeing someone whose real superpower was empathy all along not take more time to make sure his kids are alright. Like, maybe if they gave Hinata more to do and showed that he just had faith that she would be enough to keep them from feeling lonely? But if that were the case, that would just further highlight why Boruto himself isn't a good lead. The real lead would be Sarada. She's the one with the Hokage dream. Plus, her estranged relationship with Sasuke is more believable and understandable, and also more realistically cute and awkward when they are together. One of the best creative decisions in this entire show is making it to where Sarada idolizes Naruto while being estranged from Sasuke, at the same time that Boruto's idolizing Sasuke, and being estranged from Naruto. That brings me to the side characters. None of them are quite as interesting as Lee, Shikamaru, or Hinata, but they're all well defined. They do a good job breaking the mold set by their parents, and they're all far more relevant than some of the side characters from Naruto. It actually reminds me of that chunk of filler that we got at the end of the first series where Naruto would bounce back and forth between different teams and go on missions. Also known as the only times Tintin has ever been relevant in the anime. Most of the show is like that, and sometimes we'll get an entire episode with best girl Sumire, where Boruto himself isn't even involved. Where it goes with the supporting cast is anyone's guess. To my knowledge, characters like Sumire and Iwabe aren't really in the manga. Best case scenario is that it goes the My Hero Academia route. Nobody in this generation is going to be as individually strong as Naruto. Naruto had Kurama inside him and was gifted powers from all the Tail Beasts and the Sage of Six Paths. Boruto surpassing him is never going to work no matter what this power ends up doing. As another aside, when I originally recorded this, I did not know about Borushiki. If Boruto manages to talk no jutsu Momoshiki, and the two end up forming the same kind of relationship that Naruto has with Kurama, that would be... Fucking hilarious. I'm actually kind of on board with that. I, I actually genuinely want that to happen. That would be so dumb and silly and perfect for this kind of series. But collectively, Boruto, Sarada, and everyone else in their generation can and Ida argue should surpass their parents' generation, which would be a fitting twist on Shippuden where every generation after Hashirama's was just woefully pathetic and could never hope to match Madara's brokenness fuck abilities. Which brings me to my biggest fear or worry, which you might have picked up on through what I've praised and criticized. The Kara organization is dumb. Dumb enough to warrant their own video, maybe. But in summary, whereas the Akatsuki were a diverse group of intelligent shinobi rooted in the history and themes of the story, Kara is just a collective of gimmicky powers with no thematic ties to Boruto, the shinobi world, or its history. It's the Akatsuki if every member had the disposition of Hidon and the temperament of Kakuzu. I loved Hidon and Kakuzu, but I loved them because of how they contrasted each other and the more philosophical members members of the Akatsuki. It's not that I want Kara to be good or well written, I don't want them to exist. They're the first order to the Akatsuki's empire. On the surface level, they're bigger and stronger, but deep down they're wafer thin rehash trash that, if the story continues down this path, will render Naruto's prior struggles pointless and make Boruto the Rey Palpatine of the franchise. And this is where I break away from most Naruto fans. I've done a lot of looking lately, and pretty much everyone I've found just doesn't get the appeal of Boruto's earlier episodes. 
I'm not going to name any names, but pretty much anyone who prefers the Kara stuff over what came before seems to be eager for the series to pull a Rise of Skywalker and completely shaft the interesting supporting characters in favor of giving Boruto more bullshit power-ups. And when it starts coming to that, I might have to drop the series for good. Saving the world is good and all, but after the first time, it gets really old really fast. And I am not looking forward to a rehash of Naruto's worst arc. As I said from the outset, Boruto needed to be something different. And in its current trajectory, it's looking to be a watered-down version of what we already saw. But that's just, like, my opinion. Right now, Boruto still gets a tentative thumbs up. If you were, say, unsatisfied with post-cell Gohan from Dragon Ball, or Rei from the Star Wars sequels, this show might be what you're looking for. And if nothing I said in this video won you over, then it's probably for the best that you pretend it doesn't really exist. For me, I'm still on board, for now. I'm Mediocrity4, thanks for watching.